Uh, hey guys, Brooke Potter here. Uh, I was gonna put this quick video out um, just to answer a question that a friend of mine asked me about. Uh, he wanted to know what were some of the consequences and the fallout that I've had to endure uh, having been you know, preaching on healing and uh, the message of inclusion and uh, touching on some of the more controversial topics such as you know, the issues of hell, the rapture and some of my end time stuff. I have to say that the biggest thing that I've had to deal with has actually been the issue of shunning. Uh, now, for anybody who doesn't know, shunning is basically where they, uh, you know, lock off all social contact with you. Uh, and I've had to deal with that. Uh, many people that I thought were very close friends of mine and uh, pastors that I've worked with and, and congregation folk that I've worked with in the past uh, now actively ignore me. Uh, now, I'm not talking about just people unfriending me from Facebook or something like that, but uh, when I see some of these folks and I actually try to approach them, many of them would run off or uh, they'd cross the road as to not have any interaction with me. Uh, they'd run into stores and pretend to buy something as if they didn't see me. Uh, and even if I do manage to get right in front of them, uh, they will literally, you know, just dart their eyes off and they wouldn't be able to look at me in my face and, and they wouldn't even respond to me. Uh, now, generally, I, you know, I kind of laugh off this sort of behavior because I know where it's coming from. Uh, but a lot of it has been very rude, uh, especially when it's been done in front of, you know, when I might be with my friends or family uh, and I'm in a group setting and I happen to encounter these folks and I, I'd be nothing but gracious to them. And, you know, many times uh, they would just, you know, pull this kind of behavior. Uh, and, you know, some of them start to accuse me of being the devil and these other things. And, and, you know, a couple of times I've had to lash back and be like, well, you know, you're kind of being a hypocrite for accusing me of these things when really and truly you don't even know what I believe. Uh, as, and as I told my friend recently, you know, I've lost more friends over what they think I believe rather than what I actually believe. And uh, that, that's definitely been the biggest thing that I've had to deal with. Uh, one of the other things that I've had to deal with has been a lot of the institutional churches that have campaigned against me very actively. Uh, you know, I, I tend to be on the radio a lot. Uh, I be on a lot of television shows. Uh, I write syndicated articles that go out uh, on you know media blogs and is, is translated into multiple languages. And uh, there are a couple coordinated churches where, from the pulpit, they've announced you know to the congregation to get me off Facebook and. Uh, you know, don't read anything that I write or don't share anything that I post. Uh, I mean, it's even come back to me that if people even just like or comment on something that I've written or something that I've shared, they too have received a lot of backlash from their fellow congregants. Um, but many times when I'm on the air or when I'm on the radio and stuff, these people would actually call the, the radio station or the TV station and, and basically say to get me off the air that, you know, I'm saying all these lies and I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, that, that's been something that I've also had to put up with. Another thing that you know, really, really bothers me, and it, it's been something that I've had to deal with, uh, and you know, I, I probably don't even know the full extent of this, but I do know that a lot of people have gone behind my back to uh, get in contact with many of my friends and you know, start to spew all sorts of vile, hateful things, uh, basically you know, calling me a devil, say that my teachings are sending people to hell and all sorts of things. Uh, many of these people, you know, again, are advocating people should ignore me, but at the same time, they're campaigning against me. And, uh, you know, they're, they're contacting my friends behind my back. And a couple of my friends have actually forwarded me their messages. And I, I've, um, I was quite shocked and surprised, uh, especially since many of these people I thought were my friends. Uh, you know, I consider them brothers and I've worked with them. Uh, so to see that kind of turnaround, it, it was really quite shocking to me. Um, but some people, you know, I understand they want to protect their reputation and they want to protect their ministry more so than value our friendship. Uh, and as a result, you know, I've, I've had to endure that. And that has probably been the hardest thing uh, that I've actually had to endure. One of the other things that I've had to endure, of course, has been all the gossip and the smear campaigns that have come out against me. Uh, many of these people have taken things uh, completely out of context and tried to rewrite history in some fashion to try and make me into this, you know, big devil and I'm sinning up the place and I'm sleeping with all these women and these other things. Uh, you know, before I had the understanding of grace and I was stuck in religious Christianity, uh, I actually had an affair with a married woman. And, um, you know, when I confessed that to a pastor and I was seeking reconciliation and I was doing all the biblical correction things, 
um, you know, I went out and I told that to this guy and I was hoping that, you know, I would get some kind of help. But later on, when, you know, I came to the understanding of grace and I got set free from a lot of that bondage, um, this guy actually rewrote history to try and say that my new revelation had caused me to have this adulterous affair. Uh, even though at the time I was still under his teachings and I was still involved in, in that ministry and I didn't have a clue about, uh, you know, the, the new covenant and these other kinds of things. Uh, but I've had to deal with that. I've had to deal with a lot of people trying to take my past when I really didn't know anything and I was really confused and I was dealing with a lot of stuff and they try to pin that as some kind of fruit of you know my debauchery or my evil or something of my teachings uh, so I've had a lot to deal with in that regard and um, sadly nobody ever bothered to check facts on that and nobody bothered to come and check with me about any of that uh, so yeah there's a lot of speculation there's a lot of gossip going around about some of the things that I've done in the past and the timeline is all screwed up uh, but yeah that's some of the other things that I've had to endure you know, on that whole issue of rewriting history, you know, um, you know, when people re recount the events and their dealings with me, it, it's never as easy as it sounds. They always try to change things. Uh, you know, one time I tried to visit at one of the churches I was dealing with in, in hopes of reconciliation. And after like a three, four hour conversation and, you know, uh, they weren't able to discredit anything that I'd said and they weren't able really to make any kind of dent in it. Uh, by the time I left, you know, hoping that everything was resolved, you know, they, they spun around and basically said that I had some full demonic manifestation to show how evil and demonic I was or whatever it was. Uh, you know, another time I was involved in a ministry and, you know, everything was going great. We were working together and sharing and uh, going out and teaching minist uh, healing ministry and, uh, you know, New Covenant theology. Uh, but then, you know, out of the blue with no consultation from the leadership, uh, they drew a line in the sand and basically said everybody had to get on this side of their position on certain things. Uh, and for me personally, I, I didn't think it was amicable. I thought it ostracized a lot of the people that we'd reached and some of the Catholics that we've reached and some of the Eastern Orthodox that we'd reached. Uh, and, and we were really doing a disservice by making that a, a doctrinal position for the group. Uh, so when I resigned, you know, I was very surprised to learn later on that uh, it, when he retells the story and the, the leadership recounts that story, they really felt like I had abandoned, you know, th this whole movement and these other people. Uh, which wasn't the case at all, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had to deal with that and I've had to deal with people that I was once very close with, um, you know, really, really come up with all these weird things and try to rewrite history and, and really paint me in a bad light, uh, usually to save face and to save ministry value and these other things. Uh, so in closing, you know, uh, I just want to say, you know, if any of you out there have experienced any of these kinds of things, uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry that you've had to experience that. Uh, I know it wasn't easy for me to learn that, you know, many of these brothers and sisters that I had uh, thought so little of me uh, compared to doctrinal issues that, you know, they were willing to discard, um, you know, our relationship for sake of reputation and ministry. Um, uh, but more importantly, I want you all to know that you're not alone in dealing with that. You know, a lot of us who have been preaching these messages, especially over the years, uh, we've, we've all endured some kind of backlash and, uh, you know, I'm not going to call it persecution. I mean, the doctrinal difference is not persecution, uh, you know, because th these people haven't stopped or hindered my rights to preach and write and travel and do all these other things. Uh, but it's never easy. You know, it's never easy to be hurt by the people that we love. Uh, so I just wanted to put this out there and let you guys know, yeah, there has been backlash. Uh, and I'm sure many of you have been quiet about it. Um, but if you feel like it, please, you know, share your story, share your story with me. Uh, you can leave a comment below uh, about some of the things that you've had to endure. And uh, let me know, you know, sometimes there comes a point when you just got to walk away where, you know, uh, as I keep telling people, you cannot help people that don't want to be helped and you can't teach people who don't want to learn from you. And, um, you know, many people have closed off. They're so entrenched in their traditions and their doctrines. There's nothing you could say. And sometimes you just got to walk away from that. So... Uh, I hope you guys are encouraged from this video, you know, uh, just to know. I mean, they always say I'm smiling and very happy, but yeah, there have been some pretty, pretty rough times in the past uh, over these issues. So I just wanted to get that out there, and hopefully it, it'll be encouragement for a couple of you guys. So thanks again for watching, guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.